What's up everybody? Surfing Silver here. I am back and we are checking out older Jefferson Nichols today. I have here a 1959. I found two others recently. We found a 48 and a 49. The reason that I look for Jefferson Nichols in this year, one, they're higher value and you can actually sell them in bulk lots on eBay and they are actually considered a premium item under a certain year which is usually in the 50s the 40s and the 30s the Henny nickel years were 1939 1944 46 47 and 53 so it's very interesting to think about the fact that if you get any of those years mark them down that was good information you could possibly be on a Henning nickel hunt. Usually whenever you have a um, 64 below and it's one of the better years, you could see this like browner toning. I don't know what it is about these coins, but look at that 1959 clearly shining a little bit brighter than a diamond. In the mid-1950s, Francis Leroy Henning of Ariel, New Jersey, minted what is now known as the Henning Nickel. He made counterfeit nickels dated 1939, 1944, 46, 47, 53. The 1944 nickels were qu quickly spotted because he neglected to add the large mint mark. <laughs> Look at this. we got die cracks, no mint mark, and this is what it was supposed to look like. So, that's really what got him caught, the 1944 nickel. And it was the most expensive one from 1944 right now. If you look back at what they're selling, the year the war, the war nickels were worth the most. And, as you can see, it was probably pretty hard to get it exactly on 4.96 grams like the U.S. Mint did. So, the heat had 5.40 grams on the counterfeit 1944 Philadelphia there's a 1982 book called The Counterfeit 1944 Jefferson Nickel. If any of you guys are interested in this, I'd say it's probably a good read. I might even get it, and we might even read it on the channel one day. So, uh, yeah, that's a good idea for the future. These are pictures of all of his counterfeits. That's the 39. Reverse. There's the R. Die crack on the 1939. Very, very, very noticeable and happened to a lot of them. 44 is looking much sharper, and I've found some from these years, so, you know, it's something to really hunt. It's something to actually look for, you guys. I don't know about you guys, but down there on the right side of America, you can see it getting a little janky. I'd say that might be your hint to see if you actually had one in the first place when the E-R-I-C-A start looking like that. 44 is major die crack. It's apparently very hard to make coins and he had a lot of die cracks. The reverse die crack has been found on the 39 and 44. Some of Henning Nichols do not have a hole or loop in the R. Look on the reverse above Monticello to the left of the dome and you will see a small dot in the field. That is a way to tell right there without even the hole in the R. These ones are starting to look a little bit worse, whether it be wear and tear or just quality. Uh, I wonder, you would think he would have gotten better as he went on, but this is a uh, 46. I might even have some 46s here I might have to dig out and see on live stream if we have any Henning Nichols or anything close to it. I know they're rare, but there's still a lot out there because they didn't catch a lot of them from what I remember. And there's definitely a lot more than you think out there. The back of a 46. So if you see it looking pretty bare, that might be a sign. And there is the 47. That's getting more along the lines of harder to find. When you get all the details of Jefferson's hair and the print is right, it's very hard to tell compared back to back to a regular coin. You might be able to tell though, that's the thing. And right there is a 1953. I mean, that is an absolutely much easier to find year right now. So if you guys have any 1953, start looking around. 
because you just may come across one that looks a little odd on the back. E Pluribus Unum, the R, is what you need to be looking for in Pluribus. I really hope that you enjoyed the information in this little clip. And uh, yeah, I'm going to see you outside because the next clip is me uh, chilling, walking down the road, finishing this video. So yeah. Anomalies in um, counterfeiting because really he made one singular mistake with the 1944 and tried to actually sell them. And it was just one of those things that he missed the Philadelphia mark. And ever since then, his coins probably would have never been caught. And they admit that wholeheartedly. You know, it was the one major mistake that really led on to the fact that somebody was doing that. And uh, yeah, it's just fascinating to me that that existed. And uh, it's just like the Hunts Brothers rising up silver to such an undistinguishable amount. And uh, I really hope that every single person enjoyed this video. I am surfing silver and trying to up the quality of these videos for you guys. You guys deserve a lot. 1,035 people. Let's get to 1,100, y'all. Let's do it. Really hope that everybody has a great rest of their day. I am Surfing Silver, and I will see you soon.